Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis. And this evening, I have a treat for you. I have one of the funniest people that I know. He's a comedian. We went to high school together. Oh my God. And reconnected a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, actually, at an event. And I was like, you got to come on the show and we got to talk comedy. But his name is Jermaine Nichols. Good evening, Jermaine. How are you? Hello, America. What's happening? (laughs) JD, the smile hustler, for those that's wondering who Jermaine Nichols is, you know what I'm saying? Now that everybody know my Christian name, um, only my baby mamas and uh, child support court. Oh, uh, well, see, here we go. That's that's a whole <laughs> other story. <laughs> so, JD, I got to ask you. So, let's get to our show because we're talking comedy and COVID. Okay. And I don't Why know about COVID. Man, they go, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. See, see, I want them to go away because I am really tired of COVID. But 2020 has yep. been a crazy year. We Absolutely started off with COVID, school shut down, we had to go into quarantine, and it was like, wow. And then, on a serious note, we saw Ahmad Arbery murdered on film. Ain't and that crazy? It was crazy. We couldn't believe how do you, it. How, how do you murder somebody in the middle of a pandemic? Like, ain't exactly. the biological killer enough? Yes, yes. <laughs> then we see... George Floyd. Yep. And we watch the Brianna Taylor. The Bri- the brutality. I was getting to it. And then we heard about Brianna Taylor. And I don't know if you've seen the TMZ video, but it is difficult to watch. It is very difficult to watch. And to see what actually happened. We have an election. We have had uprisings and unrest pop up all across the country. We've had global unrest. Follow yep. that. While people have been chanting the name of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, and it seems almost fantastical as, yeah. as Americans. And as I said, on top of that, we have an election. And of course, Trump in the White House is saying everything that he shouldn't be saying and is not bringing the country together at all so with all of that being said how do you feel as a black american man right now okay honestly as a black american man um the unrest that i feel now i've always felt this country was never ever created built to accept us we were nothing but property we were nothing but an additive to another person's vision and none of that has changed. And I, if you can allow me just to say some craziness, I thank, God for, I thank God for COVID. I do. And the reason why I thank God for COVID, because it helps our, our leaders of tomorrow, the young people, understand that everything those of us that are conscious, uh, woke parents have been telling them is true. Mm-hmm. Slavery has not stopped. The battle, the fight for equality, for for significance, to be um, admonished and and admired and and respected has not stopped. It will never stop. We live in a country, we live inside of enemy territory. This has never been our country. This was never supposed to be our country. And as far as I'm concerned, out of all of the leaders, all of the activists that have come through our pike um, of, of our lifetime, all that I can say in our American his- in our Black American history, Marcus Garvey had it best, which is pack up and go home. <laughs> yeah, that is why most true Africans have no respect for us. And mm-hmm. looking at it from a true adulterated uh, 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 African, someone from the motherland, I totally agree with why they feel the way they feel about us. We've had all these advantages, Kim. We ourselves, like you said, we went to high school together. St. Mary's of Refer, Faux Life, Rustics mm-hmm. all day, okay? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we went to Catholic, uh, a, a Catholic uh, uh, institution, yeah. which is the one of the most established institutions in history. We see Catholic uh, school teachings 
throughout time, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have not utilized the knowledge that we were given to help free our people. If nothing else, we have all fall, uh, we've all succumbed to this fictitious belief that we can get the American dream. How did we start believing? Why did we believe that? Why did we ever think through watching the movie Glory, through mm -hmm. watching uh, Birth of a Nation, mm -hmm. through watching uh, uh, the Harriet Tubman, Josephine Baker, uh, 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 I mean, countless of stories, real life, true American history stories, we've watched as black people and we've never said, hey man, they don't love us. Right. We got to make rap songs. We got to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, how many more marches are we going to march? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm tired. My feet tired. I can't <laughs> march no more. Okay? <laughs> I'm done marching. Mm -hmm. so how much more marching can we do that's going to make them say, oh, okay, yeah, we get it. And I'm going to be honest. If I can just extend this question just a little bit more. Yes, please. I am not at all excited or enamored with all these white people all of a sudden now loving black. Why is black so delicious now? What like what's the number? Like I was talking to my 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 15 year old son, mm -hmm. and we were sitting and watching um we were watching the playoffs, the basketball playoffs, and we we're watching football on one particular Sunday, mm -hmm. and uh, we had switched from the football game to watch the basketball game. And as we're watching the basketball game, we see all these quote unquote black commercials. And when I say black commercials, I mean all of these black images being marketed to us um, on these commercials. And I'm like, and I told my son, I said, do you see this? I said, do you see all these black people all of a sudden that they showing on TV? Oh, he's like, yeah, he said, they don't never show black people on TV. This is my 15 year old talking now. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, they never show black people on TV. Now all of a sudden they show black people all the time. I said, yeah, I said, so I wonder what was the number? What was the number that clicked that made people say, you know what? 5,472 black men that got killed no more. Right. <laughs> like, come on, man. It took 7,452 black men to get murdered, but it's like, now nah, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like, come right. on, man. Right. <laughs> We've been dying forever. Okay. Yeah. And not just physically dying. Okay. We don't, here's the reason why, um, I, here's my issue with the Black Lives Matter movement, besides the fact that we let white people move in and change the narrative. Let's be yeah. real on that. Yeah, okay. we, did. we did. All of the people don't know this, but all of the people that originally started the Black Lives Matter movement are gone. They're dead. Mm -hmm. They are. They were killed. I saw that. Yes. Come on. Yeah. The original creators of the Black Lives Matter movement are all dead and ain't nobody said nothing. Right. Right. Where's, where, where's, where's that news conference? Where's that news medium? Mm -hmm. But they get lost in the shuffle of us being caught up in what I call uh, Trumplessness. Okay. Explain Trump that. What is, is that? Trumplessness is when every time you turn on TV, all you see is him and his antics. Okay. Yeah. And people don't understand that's what he do. I'm and I, you know, this is gonna sound crazy, but I ain't mad at him. Trump has been Trump since he's been Trump. Right. Every you go through the history of Trump, he ain't did nothing no different today than he was doing yesterday. Absolutely. When he got rid of the you when he made the USFL go away, which was one of the best football conferences ever, because that's the only way Michigan was going to get a football championship mm -hmm. besides college. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he ran that away. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The uh, Cent Central Park, was it Central Park 5? If Central I'm not mistaken. Central Park 5, yeah. Mm -hmm. Central Park 5, he was involved in that, saying the same craziness then. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, and it just goes on. When Obama won. First mm -hmm. person out, first person out here. Well, where's his birth certificate, though? Exactly. I'm like, his birth certificate? Where you is at? Because so you're right. Bavarian by mm -hmm. blood. Mm -hmm. Come on, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, Trump and his antics mean nothing to me because he's doing nothing but what he's supposed to do. Where I'm upset is we as a people are not using the education and the knowledge and the wherewithal that we have used to survive in this country to overcome this oppression, either create a whole sub uh, a culture that we control, that they have to listen to and admonish, or get the heck up out of here. Right. But ain't no McDonald's and hair salons and whatnot and, and, and hair supplies in Africa, I guess. So that's why we ain't, I don't know. <laughs>
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody seen no African EBT card, so I guess I don't know. You know what? You 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 gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, because soon as people find out you got an extra six hundred dollars on top of the unemployment, all of a sudden everybody unemployed. That's right. They was pissed off, right? Come on. They mm -hmm. heard they were getting extra food stamps. All of a sudden, everybody was got to get food stamps. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I guess if the, if we say, uh, you know, Africa said they're going to give us a thousand dollars worth of food stamps and give you extra six hundred dollars on your EBT, I mean, on your uh, unemployment, everybody move back to Africa. I guess. I don't I know. I guess. I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Try if to you could, out. Okay, so let me ask you this question. If you could move to Africa, where would you move to? Oh, I'm going to Nigeria with the rich folks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Detroit, boo. I'm going to it. Okay? I'm going to Nigeria where they got the money and the Hennessy. <laughs> See, this is why I wanted you to come on the show so you can make us laugh. Because this that's what year, I'm doing. 2020 that's is a curse word now. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It, it, and, it, and it shouldn't be. And I'm going to be honest, it shouldn't be. People have to understand, this is the law of inertia in full effect. With every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Okay? And one of the things I say now, um, as I am out performing uh, more now, of course, than before, mm -hmm. but um, one of the things I say now is, is, if you are not different coming out of corona than you were when you went into corona, then you didn't get the blessing of Corona. Say that again. Say it again. Oh, Say one it. more time. If you do not come out on the other end of Corona different, better than how you came into Corona, then you didn't understand the blessing of Corona. Mm -hmm. Corona, if you look at it from better eye goggles, because you know I don't have my glasses on, but we both wear glasses, Kim. Yes, we okay? do. Yeah. Come on. So when you look at Corona through the proper goggles, you will see. There's a lot of God in this, mm -hmm. okay? Number one, God is slowing people down. That's right. Before Corona, everybody was, I ain't nobody got time. I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere. I ain't got time for my kids, let alone my job that provides me my needs, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you got to slow down. That's right. Because where can you go? You can't go but so many places. Mm -hmm. You can't have but so many people. You can't mm -hmm. do but so many things. Also, it helped people to understand how unfamily they were. Yes. And I'm not talking about cousins and sisters and brothers. I'm talking about in your own home, husbands and wives, mm -hmm. mothers and children, fathers and children. Mm -hmm. Corona has now brought everybody back to the dinner table. Hello. Yep. Amen. Because we grew up with that. Hello. That's, ain't that what made us kill? That's, that's absolutely. Like a good dinner at the table, especially a Sunday dinner. Hello. That's right. Come on with that Crisco fried chicken. Come on, talk <laughs> to me. <laughs> and some mashed potatoes and gravy and Woo, some green. Stop talking that talk. <laughs> Come on. Fresh, fresh picked green beans that you had to sit on the stoop or sit on the steps and pop. That's and right. Pop in half. Mm -hmm. Pop the ends off. Come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. I taught See, my sons had, how to do that. We've lost, we had lost touch with all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's the other part of it is a lot of parents have realized that they have ruined their children by giving them so many distractions. Yes. Talk about that. Come on. We got to understand the reason why our children are, excuse my French, I know this is an unpopular word, but our children are more retarded now than ever mm -hmm. is because we took away from them the foundation the standards that made us who we are. Mm -hmm. The reason why me and you can read so well, Kim, is because your mama didn't spell no words for you. Go sure look it up. Yep. Sound it out. Remember that, Kim? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sound it out. Yep. Did you I find it? Yeah. Now use it in a sentence. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> but now look exactly. how articulate we are. Mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. how profound we are. Mm -hmm. Our linguistics. Oh, did I use the word linguistic? You did. Uh, it's yeah. good. I like Our that word. Our linguistics are so fluid and we command respect because of how we speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're cultured and we understand things. We understand different cultures and uh, uh, different practices and things of that nature because of the things we read, whether it was personal mm -hmm. or 
for a uh, school, which would be prof- uh, for professional uses. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. See, we took all of that away from our children because we wanted them to be quiet and leave us alone. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Go on in there. Where your tablet at? <laughs> Go go play that game. I done paid one hundred seventy five. I done paid two hundred dollars. Well, go play that game. <laughs> but you ain't spending no time with this child. You're not helping them develop. You're actually making them more deficient to the world today than before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now the powers that be, which have done has they do regular studies all the time, which we know. Mm-hmm. And so they know this. And so now with this new world order that's in effect, because again, that's the other side of Corona. Mm -hmm. Corona is nothing more than a gateway to finalize the new world order establishment. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are controlling our spending. Mm -hmm. They're controlling our movements. Mm -hmm. They tracking us like enemy of the state every day. Yeah. Okay. Now they know how much money you spend. They know where you're going, who you with. They know how much work you're producing. Mm -hmm. And they're making our children lazier because the lazier you are, the more control they have over you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because if you, like, like, just like with the whole $600, like I told people, I said, you know, that $600 on top of your unemployment is doing nothing but making people not want to go back to work. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to go back to work and you're not productive, then you're no longer, as I say, you're not a uh, constituent. You're just a citizen. Mm -hmm. See, a constituent is an active member of society giving and getting back in return what they've been giving. Mm -hmm. A citizen is just somebody just here. They're just a number. We just use you when we need to use you for, you know, corona death count or corona infection count or, you know, count day at the school or whatever time we need to count. Mm-hmm. You know, vote, mm-hmm. uh, vote numbers of people that went out. You know, that's when we need you when you just, you know, when you just a citizen. Right. But when you're a constituent, you matter mm-hmm. because you're giving and you're adding to the economy. You're adding to the ebb and flow of the whole system. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have to understand. We are, we are in the midst of that. And if you're not educated and knowledgeable to what's really going on, then you're just going to be, you know, just going to be a pawn, a peon, mm-hmm. as I say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I knew I came to the right person. Baby, you couldn't have never went wrong with me. I I stay abreast of what's happening, you that's, know? And and that's what people have to do. And what's sad is you hear so many people who don't understand, who, you know, get mad and get frustrated and don't want to do anything. And as I tell people, I said, you got to step outside your door. First, get your house in order. Once right. you get your house in order, then Come you can on. step outside your door and work mm-hmm. in your neighborhood. When we get our neighborhoods in order, then we can organize our communities. Absolutely. And And that's where it is. It has to start, like they say, charity starts at home. It does. And and we say charity, but what we mean by charity is you have to start, like you said, with yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to start with making sure you're doing the best you're doing for you. Mm Mm-hmm. So many people, and that's the other part of Corona that should have happened to people is they should now be um as i say relieving themselves of the fronts fronts meaning those things that we put up to make people think something about us mm-hmm. that ain't really true mm-hmm. you know the car we drive the house we live in the education we have how much money we got in the bank how we keep our kids hairs cut you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. you know we put up all these fronts so we can so people can think something of us when in actuality we're not even anything close to that and if corona has not helped you to eliminate those fronts and realize that you've been doing more fronting mm-hmm. than actually being real, then again, you miss the blessing of Corona. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was a wonderful, wonderful uh, description. So Thank you. I got to pivot a little bit because, you know, we were supposed to talk about comedy too. So when did you decide that you wanted to become a comedian? Uh, okay. Here's the thing. Now, as you know, um, I was always talked about in high school, okay, because yeah. I was always I very, very, very dark, okay, yeah. mm-hmm. and, you know, they treated my skin color like as though I had AIDS, you know, so nobody wanted it, everybody's, ooh, you dark, ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I never, um, I never knew how to play the dozens, mm-hmm. okay, um, being from a Kojic, a Church of God in Christ background, mm-hmm. um, a grandmama, mama's boy, you mm-hmm. know, I was never one of those ones that um, could play the dozens. I just wasn't good at it. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Then being dark skin always made me the butt of all jokes. So I always tried to steer away from, you know, those situations. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for me, I went to a school that had a very, very small population. So we were very, very close net. So you always (laughs) in a situation where somebody was getting talked about. Mm -hmm. And I happened to have one of the loudest laughs. Probably. uh, right. In St. Mary's <laughs> history. So if somebody says something good on somebody, I'm going to laugh. Who wouldn't? We teenagers. Right. As soon as I laugh the loudest, you know how I go. Oh, you laughing? Mm-hmm. Oh, you think it's funny? And mm-hmm. the next thing you know, I'm getting called a uh, uh, burnt toast. You know what I'm saying? A uh, burnt coffee, silhouette man after midnight, blah, 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 blah. So what I have, what I learned to do was I learned to talk about myself better than anybody else because the jokes just started getting so repetitive i mean by by the time you get to what junior year you didn't heard almost every black joke you can ever hear and mm-hmm. it's like come on man y'all can't think of nothing new i mean three years in come right. on now right so by junior year i was like okay bet i'm gonna talk about myself because who know me better than me i'm mm-hmm. with me every day mm-hmm. so i would start talking about myself if anybody could and by the end of junior year nobody could talk about me anymore okay well, I took that with me to college because, of course, like we all know, college gives you a, a start over button. It's like mm-hmm. start fresh. Mm-hmm. So I go to college. I'm in Indiana. And I start being more of the Jermaine I always wanted to be but couldn't be in high school because, you know, everybody had already mm-hmm. made their opinions of me because mm-hmm. it's Detroit. It's what mm-hmm. we do, the hater capital of the world. Anyway. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm down in Indiana and I'm just out here being myself, my natural, fun loving, entertaining self. And before I know it, I mean, everybody's in love with me. Everybody, oh, this guy's hilarious. You so funny, da da da. And I heard that so much. So um, I had a car accident uh, my sophomore year, had to stay home for rehab, wound up going to the University of Detroit Mercy. Okay. And it was at the University of Detroit Mercy where um, not only I became a Sigma, you know, Phi Beta Sigma, Fraternity Incorporated, mm-hmm. Blue and White, you know, keep it rocking all night. Anyway, um, <laughs> so after becoming a Sigma, hanging out, still being this uh, enamored, just just charismatic character, people kept saying, man, you should be a comedian. You are funny. You just never be funny. I mean, and that's usually every comedian story you've heard it a thousand times. Mm-hmm. People say, you're funny, funny, you should be a comedian, comedian. So I set out. I embarked. Eight, uh, was I 19? Eight, no, 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 no. I was 19 going on 20. I embark on becoming a comedian. Um, the, at the time, the uh, comedians uh, that I was underneath were Big Daddy Fritz, uh, Mike Bonner, Tommy Chung, Tony Roberts, uh, 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 Tony Roney. Uh, these are all the guys that were established at the time. Matter of fact, um, the, uh, the great late Kool-Aid uh, mm-hmm. started when I started. Me, Kool-Aid, Martini, and a guy by the name of Pilot all started at the same time. But as I say all the time, I was a comedy dropout. Um, I was doing it, and at the time, uh, that particular time and time period, uh, comedians, more established comedians, they did not, um, uh, unlike now, they didn't help you, put it like that. Uh, wow, they weren't there. Really? Oh, yeah, no, no. You you got pledged. That, this, this, this was comedy pledging back in the day. Okay. So if you was a new comic, say you're asking questions, how do you write jokes? They, they, they ain't talking to you. Mm. <laughs> they looking at you like, huh? Who is you? <laughs> so you had to put in work in order for them to to, to uh, respect you, if you would, and help you out. Well, I, like I said, I'm new. I'm very inquisitive. Like I said, we went to Catholic University. They always taught us you got a question, you ask it. That's the only way you figure things out. Right. So I'm I'm asking questions wherever, and I'll never forget it. Um, I was at this one spot. Uh, matter of fact, Mitch's uh, over on Grand River. Uh, they just got through doing open mic and they used to go across the street to now what's called the TV lounge, but I forget what it was called back then, but they would go across the street to the club across the street after the set. So I go across the street, I'm hanging out, go to Tony Roberts and I'm like, oh man, you so funny. Oh my God, man. I mean, how do you, how do you come up with you, the concepts? I know that. And he looked me square in my face and then looked around like, who is this black N-I-G-G-A? <laughs> who is he? And why is he talking to me? Who know this boy? And wow. man, I became, it became an entire blade session where people was tag teaming and clowning me and whatever. And it was at that moment that, again, it reminded me of high school. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, I already been through this. I'm not doing this again. Mm-hmm. So 
I dropped out. I said, you know what? I'm in college. I'm about to make something myself. I don't even know these cats. They ain't even on no TV. Who know them? And I'm out. So I dropped out at that time. Fast forward some years later, I get married. Um, I still haven't found my career path yet because I'm just out here just living. And I got to thinking about what I liked, what I was into. And the three things that I realized that I liked at that time when I got married, this was 1999, was I liked to run my mouth. I love entertaining people. And I love music. So I was on a basketball team in Lans living in Lansing. I was on a basketball team. It just so happened to be the local radio station's basketball team. The uh, program director was from Detroit, Brant uh, Johnson. We were really good friends. So I went to him. I was like, hey, Brant, could I intern, you know, learn the radio? I really think this might be for me. This, that, another. He said, hey, I'll do you one better. He gave me a job. Started doing weekends on the radio. That turned into me doing the morning drive. Before you knew it, I was the man of Lansing, and that parlayed into me being a host because they had just um, they had a popular place called Sparty's that used to be for families. They used to have an arcade, but again, the arcade game kind of went away because of video games, mm -hmm. and they changed their arcade room into a comedy club called the Comedy Zone. Mm -hmm. They had an audition for a host. I was there. I auditioned for two and a half minutes. The guy was like, "You hired. You the one." Wow. And that started my whole comedy career right there. And I've been a comedian ever since, doing it professionally. Never thought I could do this for money. Never thought this would be something that was, you know, I wanted it to be something for me. But I just was like, well, after that little incident, you know what I'm saying, with the Detroit comments, I was like, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But again, God has already predestined us to do what he wants us to do. All we got to do is accept the call. Absolutely. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm accepting my call because I understand that with my comedy comes more than just me making people laugh. Um, I'm an invigorator, um, I'm an informer, I'm an educator, you know, and sometimes I'm a minister. Mm -hmm. So I'm just doing what I'm called to do because this is just natural for me. This ain't even hard. This is what I do. So I'm out here doing it. Well, like I said, when I saw you at the fundraiser, I laughed. And I was like, I remember when you used to make me laugh in high school when I would be sad and you would just make me laugh. And then I would just look at you and I would punch you and I'd be like, Jermaine, go away, leave me alone. And you'd be like, well, we, was laugh. <laughs> we was the misfits. Me, you, Delon yeah. Parham. Yes. Uh, 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 Cheryl, Cheryl Tut. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Danielle Tut, Cheryl Williams, and uh, what's my Tim Devaney. Mm -hmm. We was the outcasts. Mm -hmm. We, mm -hmm. I call it. We used to get along, gang, because all these said, "Get on, get along." <laughs> yeah, I just stayed in the background so people wouldn't talk about me. I understand because I would see people talk about you, and I'd be like, "Oh, let me just go." Oh yeah. Oh, I used to get it. I, oh, I used to get it regular. Oh my god. And I, it was just easy to talk about. I mean, I was skinny. I was dark. Had big old feet, and I was loud. <laughs> Too easy of a target. Yeah. Yeah. So. You were on to a point where you were talking about how comedy helps people. So how has your comedy helped people deal with 2020 and COVID? Um, because people need to, okay, especially the type of comedy that I do, which is, um, I call my comedy like, it's like uh, reality, re, real, reality satire, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really nothing but making fun of what you already know. And I just put it in a more simplistic form for you to see like, yeah, you're right. That's all I look for in my comedy. I just look for the, man, you're right. <laughs> that's all I want to hear. I don't want to hear nothing laugh and tell me I'm right, and that's all I care about. And so that's what I'm doing in 2020 is helping people to understand that this thing that we're underneath is not what it's is not what they're advertising. What they're advertising this to be ain't what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you got to see the forest for the trees. So what I'm doing with my comedy is making sure that I'm uh pulling back the veil, clearing up the fog, okay, so that we understand what the true focus needs to be, okay? Our focus right now needs to be on bettering yourself, strong family, strong family connection, okay, and making sure we're giving back. Mm -hmm. As black people, if the world today, right now today, has not woken us up to understand that we, all we got, then you're missing the message. Mm -hmm. You're missing everything. Mm -hmm. Everything now should scream to you, we got to do better. 
we got to stick together because we in the same game. It don't matter who you are. Everybody that is African-American is going through some type of prejudicial situation. I myself, I'm a, besides a comedian, I'm a certified nurse assistant, mm -hmm. which means I'm just a professional booty wiper or an old people babysitter, whichever <laughs> you want to look at. Okay? <laughs> but what's sad is I'm still a minority because there are not a lot of men nor straight men that do what I do. Yeah. I'm in a female dominated industry and it's primarily dominated by African American women. Mm -hmm. So what winds up happening is I get put in prejudicial situations. And when I say prejudicial, I mean sex, completely sexism all day long. Okay. Wow. All day long. I am this look, I could literally file every day some type of sexual harassment or sexism suit if I wanted to, but it's futile. It really is because it's going to keep happening. Um, it, it, it's innate uh, because unfortunately, uh, so many of our women are not allowed to be real women. Mm -hmm. They're forced to have to be uh, breadwinners mm -hmm. when they don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now they happen to be breadwinners and educators when they don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the woman was naturally, this may sound chauvinistic, but it's true. The woman's primary job was to be the nurturer, mm -hmm. the caretaker. Mm -hmm. We're African, mm -hmm. not just African American, we're African. So if we study out our lineage, we see the woman is who nurtured the tribe. She made the clothes, she cooked the food, she made sure that um, she helped the shaman with the medicine and the gathering, and what did the husband do? He protects the tribe, he hunts and gathers to feed the tribe, he provides. He mm -hmm. provides security, he provides comfort, he, uh, he provides food. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, because the powers that be know these things like we know right now, they flipped the script. They emasculated the black man, Mm -hmm. stripped him of his power, stripped mm -hmm. him of his purpose, stripped him of his position, elevated the black woman. Mm -hmm. And now that mentality, now we, and we, we're living in the age of the water bearer, the age of Aquarius. And so that's why I tell people, that's why you see so much, you know, a, a, a promotion of black, of, of women, period, not just black women, but women across the board. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, you see more quote unquote lesbian scenes on TV now. You feel what I'm saying? More female shows. Right. Do you know that they about to do a new Ghostbusters is about to come out? Okay. Uh, they already did it. They doing another one? They about to do a third one with kids. Oh wow. I didn't yeah. know that. I just saw it last night. I was watching this uh late, late, late show, which was happened to be the host was a female uh uh, uh Indian. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know that's you know Bollywood, you know that's the new yeah. hot. Okay. Yeah. Because right. they're colored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want to promote us, but they'll find other colored people to promote just so they say, oh, no, no. We mm -hmm. love minorities. Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so my whole point is um, that's why you see all these things you're seeing now is because, again, they want to do everything they can to promote everything but the right thing. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And like I said, they have gotten women to the point where women believe, like, oh, as long as we stick together, we good, meaning woman to woman, but we need each other. Everybody needs everybody. I say, I scream all the time to black women, black men need you, not just to procreate, not just to support us, but we need you to be our teammates. Mm -hmm. We need that because we're still going through the same thing. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as uh, black Americans, we fail to realize that most of the stuff that we're going through, we caused to ourselves mm -hmm. because of decisions that we made. Mm -hmm. Most black women mad at black men, but how many bad black men did you pick, honey? Right. Because I didn't pick up by you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you mad at me because I represent a class of individuals that you feel treated you wrong, but you chose that. Mm -hmm. You chose to either stay, you chose that individual, you feel what I'm saying? Or you just chose to not say nothing and deal with the situation at hand. So mm -hmm. the fault is on you, not on us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And the same thing with black men. I get mad at black men all the time. They're like, well, black women don't, black women this. But, well, you're not stepping up. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep calling them, excuse my French, B's and H's. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you put it in a song, you make it a regular conversation, you don't got it so much so that the, now the women think that's a term of endearment just like the N-word. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know Don't call and, me that. Don't call me right. that. I'm not that. 
if that, if that I'm saying, if that ain't you, then what are you doing calling each other that in 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 jest? You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As as oh, you know, I love my bees. These my right. bees. I love my bees. What? Right. Right. But then when, when I see you acting like one, which you really sometimes is one, and I say, oh, who is you talking to? Did you just call your girl and yourself that? What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's crazy. So, again, I say all of what I said, I surmise it with this. We have to understand the attack that we are under. We've constantly been under attack. We've constantly been uh, abused, used, uh, uh, ridiculed in a whole nine. And we have to take back ownership of who we are and our purpose. Mm -hmm. But if we continue to take the easy route, if we continue to think, oh, uh, 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 not working and taking unemployment is better than working and, and, and developing character and developing purpose, then, you know, we're going to lose. Mm-hmm. We're going to lose every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What are we teaching these kids now? Because I like the whole participation trophy garbage. We right. teach these kids that it's okay to be whatever. Mm-hmm. It's okay to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Do what you want. It's okay. Don't nobody care. No, it all matters in the end. Especially with us being African American, mm-hmm. we have no choice but to hold ourselves to a higher standard so that we can always protect our legacy. Mm-hmm. But we're not doing that anymore. We're not, and mm-hmm. it's 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 a sad commentary. It really is, and it, it, it's interesting because I want to go back to what you were saying about black men and black women and how mm-hmm. you refer to yourself. And unfortunately, if black men and i've had this happen before where you know a guy will say something to you and if you don't respond in the way that they want you to then oh you must be a such and such well why do i have to be all of that i'm not that i just don't want to talk to you because your pants are sagging down to the floor or you know you you you, you're not dressed and behaving in the way that i want to see you if i can see more of your underwear Ooh-oh. in your undershirt Ooh-oh. and you look dirty and, and, and you haven't groomed yourself mm. then you know there's there's no conversation there's, there's no popping. conversation but then all of a sudden you wrong because right. you got you have a uh, 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 expectations you know exactly. what I'm saying you got you have standards so all of a sudden right. you are the enemy mm-hmm. because you want to hold yourself to a higher standard I mean like you said who wants to, but then what's crazy, I, I, I'm, I'm going to sidebar right quick and just say this. Okay, go ahead. What's cra- what, no, no, what's crazy is those same people, the ones get mad at you for not hollering at them, will turn around and dog a female yeah. that's on their level. Yeah, they will. They nah, will. she's so ratchet, she's so this. So is you. Right. Right. I mean, if that's what you're presenting, you might as well get with her because she's presenting the same thing. Mm-hmm. Y'all mm-hmm. like peanut butter and jelly. Exactly. Exactly. Just spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight tacky. But Just you know tacky. the but the other thing is you're absolutely right. And we're seeing it um especially with COVID right now, the breakdown mm-hmm. of the family. We've always seen it, but now it's it's really under the microscope and it's been magnified even more so. Mm-hmm. And women are having these conversations like, I just wish I had a good man, or I wish okay, well, you keep picking the same thing over and over again right. or men will say i just wish i could find a good woman well why do you every day you got to spend 500 dollars? you made that decision to go mm-hmm. out and show off so mm-hmm. because there was an article i saw on social media it was talking about how women use men for free food right they do. and i and, and i get it and i understand that's a real thing and i sympathize but at the same time why are you trying to show off what you have that never never enticed me ever at all it was okay. always about the character of the person conversation vibes all those good things to see if you connect it anybody can go and, and spend two hundred dollars and get a nice meal and take oh, you someplace sure. fancy. But you for could sure. be the nastiest, and I don't mean dirty, I'm just saying personality. You could be rude, you could be tacky, you could be classless, you could be all of those things. As they always say, money does not give you class. Class, is, class is something that you sometimes learn, but sometimes is what's within you. 
Absolutely. In terms of being decent. And so I always say hurt people hurt people. And so we got Ooh. a whole lot of women who are hurting, who yep. are hurting other men. There are yep. a whole lot of men who are hurting that are hurting other women. Yes. And that's the, and, and I'm, and I'm going to expound on that with mm -hmm. how do you expect to find a good man, but you out here using most of the men that you deal with? Oh, there we go. That's that's a whole nother segment. That's a whole nother segment. And I'm not hating on women because, you know, I had friends coming up when I got to college. She was like, girl, just go out with him. He going to take you and get you a, a nice meal. He going to buy yeah. you this. And I'm thinking, but if he's doing all this for me, he's going to have an expectation. Exactly. And I don't, I don't play that. So, exactly. you know, when people always say that, I'm like, basically, you selling yourself for whatever it is that they can give you. You tricking. Yep. That's all. And that's what I call it. They get mad at me for saying, I'm like, look, you tricking one way or another. Mm -hmm. If you are exchanging time for some type of goods or compensation, you tricking. Yep. That's what tricking is. Yeah. Because you tricked it. Because tricking in essence means you trick this person to think one thing and did something else. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That's like, what tricking is. So, I, okay, I got to ask you this question because I was I was talking to my husband about it and, he, and we were laughing about it. So this guy said he took a friend of his, some, some lady I think that he worked with or what have you, that he uh -huh. was crazy about. He took okay. her on a trip. Took her on a trip. He took her by boat and plane to some island. Ooh. And the first day was trying to get it on. And she was like, oh, my stomach hurts. And then the second day, she was like, I really don't like you like that. And he was yep. like, for real. Yep. And so then they had this whole conversation. And she was like, well, I could take care of myself. He was like, okay. And she gave him his key back. He said, well, you need to go down to the front desk. And when she got to the front desk and realized how much her room cost that she didn't yeah. afford it, she yeah. was like, back to the bar, like, um... You know, I you know, I I I I think I got a little ahead of myself. And yeah, she like, did. See you later. Boy. See you uh -uh. later. Uh uh, cause he got now he done got him a little island chick who's so happy to see that American money. She was <laughs> doing whatever, and he ain't got to pay for nothing. All he got to do is just be there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's what I mean. You have so many women, and I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm going to say something that's probably going to really make people give some comments on this show when I say uh -oh. this. Uh-oh. But no city in this country has black women who can play this game better than Detroit. <laughs> black women, I'm saying it. You look, Jermaine Nichols is saying this. So <laughs> y'all, you come at me if you want to. I'm on, I'm on everything. Find me and let's talk. <laughs> but black women from Detroit know how to game on men better than any woman out here in these streets. And the reason why, because I've done my research to back up this statement, is because <laughs> they come from a long line of women who have taught them the game. From oh. Big Mama mm -hmm. to Grandmama mm -hmm. to Mama. Mm -hmm. to aunties and friends of those. Mm -hmm. I know myself because I was raised by black women, all of them, okay? Mm -hmm. I watched my grandmama, both of them, milk my grandfathers for that extra cash, okay? <laughs> my one grandmama she knew, oh, he cut, because my, uh, my, my father's mom and dad, my grandfather was a trucker, truck driver, mm -hmm. do coast to coast, okay? Mm -hmm. Interstate, out of state, all of that, okay? So she, when she knew he was coming in with that, oh, baby, everything was on the table. Fried green tomatoes, fried chicken, meatloaf. Oh, he ate good. She rubbed them stinky but feet, <laughs> run that bath water, all that. And make <laughs> sure she was going to get that check, okay? <laughs> the next day, guaranteed they had a full-fledged argument by breakfast. Uh, <laughs> I'm the board. I let you. You go. You need to go down to the store and play my numbers. I ain't going to no store today. You better go down there and play my numbers. 
Go on somewhere. Anybody try to listen to you, Willie Mae? You better, Benny, you better go play your game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was the most hilarious thing ever. All my life, that's what I, I, that's all I want is a, I want a marriage where I'm just arguing with my woman for no reason when we old and bit can't do nothing but just uh, rock in the swing and drink lemonade and argue every day. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. If she tell you you drink it loud. She tell you oh, drink it loud. Oh, <laughs> oh, you chew too loud. Now, like, shut up, woman. I bought this food. I chew as loud as I want to chew. Blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about, oh, then my other grandma, then my uh my mom's mom, oh, she was a G G G. Cause all she do, what she would do is in order for her to get money from my grand from from my mom's dad, what she do, she start complaining. She it was so funny. I mean, it was like clockwork. She had started at two o'clock, and by eight o'clock, she got everything she needs. She like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if I had some better pots, I sure <laughs> could cook, cook better. You know, these floors sure do need to be pulled up. If I had better floors, my feet wouldn't hurt. And my back and my neck and oh man by the end of the day he be done bought her new bed new, changed the floors went out bought new pots i'm like it, and they come these these the old school gamers you get what i'm saying yeah and it was like i learned in college i was like if you from detroit and you a black female and you can't survive outside detroit kill yourself <laughs> you didn't learn nothing every black girl that i went i went to two different colleges when I was in Indiana, all the black girls from Detroit was getting all the money. They was doing hair, doing yeah. nails, doing papers, uh, 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 boosting. Uh, yes, I said it, boosting. <laughs> <laughs> they had everything. They knew they knew if they couldn't buy the liquor, they knew somebody who could buy the liquor. Then they mm -hmm. triple sell it when mm -hmm. they get into the campus. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> so like I said, don't nobody run game on men better than black women from Detroit. They the best. They know what to do. They done come, they come from a long line of gamers. They know what's going on. They know the game. And they know what make men tick. They they If they ain't taught nothing else, they definitely taught that. Okay? They like, men, minds ain't on but one or two things. You and something to eat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> long as you, long as you keeping them two together, you guaranteed to get took care of. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? And I'm just saying. And then now that the big girls is winning, ooh. Oh, yeah. It's a whole ooh. new game now. It's a oh, whole new game. man. The game done changed. Now, nah, big girls is winning. And I'm just going to say this to all the big girls that's out there doing their thing. I ain't mad at you. Just don't keep getting big. That's all I say. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Once you hit your big mark where it's like, yeah, that's it. Stay there. <laughs> don't, don't keep don't, going. <laughs> don't keep going. Don't keep like, no, 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 it's okay. No, 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 it's not okay. No, find find your apex and stay right there. <laughs> That's all I say. JD, thank you for, for that laugh. You had me laughing. Okay, so tell me what you have coming up because we only Ooh. have a few more minutes. All right, here we go. Here we go. Real quick, look, y'all. Um, I got... The all uh, uh, got my famous Alzheimer's show coming up. Uh, my girl Maureen Lutz. Uh, that's November the fifteenth. Go on my page, check it out. We're doing it. Uh, we're doing a, a show for all of uh, frontliners, healthcare workers, caregivers, and whole nine yards. And uh, it's all you know based on the Alzheimer. I believe it's the Alzheimer's Foundation if I'm not mistaken, but definitely November 15th or November 14th. I'm sorry, November 14th, but go on my page, Jermaine Nichols on Facebook, JD the Smile Hustler on Facebook, Smile Hustler on one on Twitter, or Smile Hustler on Instagram and Snapchat. That'll keep you abreast of that. Also, I got another big show. Come away. I'm hosting a party in Toledo this weekend. Um, my girl, uh, uh, Angie Salinger, is turning... 40, oh, okay, I ain't supposed to say it, my bad. <laughs> she turned okay, 40, 40, 40, 40 special. That's what I say, 40 special. There you go. And uh, we celebrate her birthday. Just so happy me and her have the same birth date, October the 8th. You oh, know happy belated birthday. Thank you very much, Libra's in the building. So I'll be in Toledo this here Saturday. Come on out, hang out with us. If you're anywhere nearby or you're just trying to get out because you're tired of being cooped up in quarantine, come hang out with us. Um, if we can get you in there, because they do have a living in Ohio. <laughs> I mean, people can be in the building. So, 
definitely come on out for that. Also, I got something else coming up in the end of October, but you have to go on my page to find out because I don't have my calendar right in front of me. But again, that's what social media is for. I don't have to remember nothing because everything is on my page. Go holler at me on social media again. Jermaine Nichols on Facebook. JD the Smile Hustler on Facebook. Uh, Smile Hustler 1 on Twitter and Smile Hustler on Instagram and on Snapchat. Be my friend. Help me turn these frowns upside down. Get the world back happy again because that's the only way we're going to make it through. Thank you, JD, the Smile Hustler. We love you. Thank you for being on the show. My pleasure, we hope Kim to B. See you again. Kim <laughs> B in the building. Rush What's up? <laughs> Thank you all for tuning into the Kim B. Davis show. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode. We hope to see you on our next show. And as always, remember, be magnificent. Absolutely.